am Callista Bernard, and today I want to tell you a bit about my research on twisted homology operations. So maybe I'll start with a bit of context. Uh, so in the 70s, Peter May and Fred Cohen uh, developed a theory of operations on the mod P homology of EN algebras. So here they work with a couple of distinguished operations. So these are usually known as Dirac-Lashoff operations. And when n is finite, you also need a Browder bracket. And they show that these operations generate all homology operations, and they give a description of the homology of a free EN algebra in terms of these operations. So that's for constant coefficients. And there are many settings in which twisted coefficients arise very naturally, and it's sort of desirable to have a similar theory for twisted coefficients. So that's the first thing that I've been working on, is developing a similar theory of twisted homology operations. So operations on homology of EN algebras with certain twisted coefficient systems. Um, yeah, so that's for EN algebras again. And the second thing that I've been working on is trying to apply this theory to examples that cannot be analyzed using the existing theory. Uh, so let me say something about one of those. So we can consider general linear groups. So we'll take the disjoint union of classifying spaces of general linear groups of ring R. And this has a well-known E infinity structure and this infinity structure can then be used to study homological stability of the general linear groups. So this is work of Soren Galatius, uh, Alexander Coopers, and Oscar Randall Williams. And for their work, it's really essential that you have this infinity structure. And one ingredient in their work is these operations on the homology of E-infinity algebras. Um, so what if we try to do the same thing for special linear groups? We can also look at the disjoint union of classifying spaces of special linear groups. And you can take this E-infinity structure and try to restrict it to one for special linear groups. But unfortunately, it doesn't work. It doesn't give you an E-infinity structure. And so, uh, you can't just directly apply their methods, but what you can do is use this useful fact that the homology of special linear groups, let's just say with integral coefficients, is isomorphic to the homology of general linear groups with coefficients in some twisted system. And so if you allow these twisted coefficients, you can use the E-infinity structure on general linear groups to say something about the homology of special linear groups with this framework that they develop. Uh, but you do require this ingredient that you need to understand operations on homology with twisted coefficients. So my work provides that ingredient. Um, and so I'm actually working on this example right now in a collaboration with Jeremy Miller and Peter Patzt. So that's one example that this theory applies to but I expect there to be lots of other interesting examples. So maybe now I'll say something about this first point of developing the theory. So what I do is I work with uh, EN algebras in a functor category, so the category of functors from some category C into, we'll say, chain complexes. You can work with other categories here. So this category C is a rigid braided monoidal groupoid. So I won't say what that is, but you can keep in mind the example of when C is the fundamental groupoid of an n-fold loop space. And the coefficient systems that I consider uh, consist of a field F together with an action 
of the morphisms of this category, C, on F. So that's a functor in this category, and I can define homology and uh, homology operations in this setting and try to develop my theory here. So maybe I'll just say some of the key features that are different about this setting from the, from the classical setting. So I've already worked out the E infinity case. And when, when you work with E infinity, you need to require that C be symmetric monoidal. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense to consider E infinity algebras. And so in, in some places, the uh, classical Dyer-Lashoff operations are actually defined here. But you also need some additional operations, which are sort of like twisted versions of the Dyer-Lashoff operations. Um, and in case you're familiar with the notation for the classical Dyer-Lashoff operations, I'll write my notation here just to sort of illustrate that they're very related and they behave sort of similarly. And so I prove a bunch of properties that these satisfy and I show that these twisted Dyer-Lashoff operations together with the classical Dyer-Lashoff operations generate all operations on homology of E infinity algebras with these twisted coefficient systems. Um, okay, so that's the most different thing in that setting. And what I'm currently working on is the case of E2. So here you can let C be braided monoidal. And uh, again, you have these twist twisted versions of the Dyer-Lashoff operations. And they, you, you have fewer Dyer-Lashoff operations for E2, but these twisted operations behave like they do in the E infinity case. Uh, but what's really different, the, the part of this theory that's most novel, is what happens when you try to generalize the Browder bracket here. Um, so I've done some computations to show that, um, that when you try to generalize the Browder bracket, thus the story becomes very complicated. So in particular, in some cases, there are no binary operations, no non-zero binary operations that could take the place of the Browder bracket. But instead, you do have um, some higher arity operations. So these are operations that take in more than two inputs, but they don't, and they, and they behave a bit like a Browder bracket, but they don't decompose into uh, iterated binary operations. So they're really new operations, and you need them to generate all operations. But depending on what coefficient system you might have, you have, you might have several of these new operations, and it's so far very mysterious how they all relate to one another. And so I'm still working on understanding this. But I expect that once I have a generating set for these Browder brackets, that together with the twisted and the classical Dyer-Lashoff operations will generate all operations here. And I'll end by just saying a couple of words about the very last case, which is en for n between 2 and infinity. So again, here you need c to be symmetric monoidal. And here, monoidal, uh, here I don't think there should be anything novel. You should have these twisted Dyer-Lashoff operations again. And the Browder bracket in the symmetric monoidal case is actually very similar to the classical Browder bracket. So I don't think that should have any surprises. Um, and I expect that those will generate all operations. So that will conclude this theory of twisted operations. Um, and I, I hope there will be more interesting examples. So thanks for listening. Please feel free to get in contact if you have any questions.